I'm really excited about what's about to happen in the digital asset space because of of supply and demand. Yeah. Right? We got we got the Bitcoin ETF, which is going to be approved. BlackRock's going to get approved. And whether anyone else gets approved, I don't know. I'll take the under, but but hopefully, like I look, I own pieces of 21 shares and bitwise. I hope both of them get approved. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Mark, Yusko discuss about Bitcoin and crypto, according to Mark Yusko, because of supply and demand. Mark Yusko really enthusiastic about what's going to happen in the world of digital assets as of right now. As we have the approval of the Bitcoin ETF, and it remains to be seen if BlackRock will also receive approval as accepted. Mark Yusko not sure if Mark accept the under. But maybe as he look own portions of 21 shares and bitwise, Mark Yusko hoping that both of them be accepted both in line ahead of BlackRock. But since Mark love to wager, Mark Yusko say I would wager on both of them being rejected and BlackRock being granted approval, which will release assets of $30 trillion held by financial advisors who are not permitted to purchase digital assets. And in the event that their clients request 10 basis points, if they say, Mark want 100 basis points 1%, that's 30 billion, which isn't even a lot, that's 300 billion. You know, the average trade volume for Bitcoin is 100 billion, since most of the 600 billion are huddled together. 300 billion will equal 100 billion of free float, which is a significant step from what you've previously witnessed. Things have been going really well here. Ethereum has been rebounding, you know, Bitcoin is still trailing, and lots of things Mark Yusko discussed, so please watch the video to end, and like, share, subscribe our channel, Everyday Finance. Thanks. The good news is, is digital assets in the stock market aren't correlated at all, right? Mm -hmm. They actually went to negative correlation here recently, and, you know, the long-term correlation of, of, let's just take Bitcoin to the S&P is 0, 0 0.15. And it had one small period during the liquidation 2020 when it went up, but that's the nature of liquidations, right? You don't get to sell what you want to sell, you sell what you can sell. And so all correlations go to one during liquidations of, of margin. So we're back to a period of, of low, I won't say negative, but low correlation. And so look, I think stocks are going to struggle. I think, you know, this this rally probably goes longer than people think, but then, you know, they're going to have to pay the piper and they're just pulling forward future demand. And, you know, I think I think next year is going to be going to be meaningfully tougher. Mm -hmm. But that said, I'm really excited about what's about to happen in the digital asset space because of of supply and demand. Yeah. Right. We got we got the Bitcoin ETF, which is going to be approved. BlackRock's going to get approved. And whether anyone else gets approved, I don't know. I'll take the under. But but hopefully, like I look, I own pieces of 21 shares and Bitwise. I hope both of them get approved. They're both ahead of BlackRock in line. But I'm a betting man and I would bet both of them get denied and uh, BlackRock gets approved. That approval is going to unlock $30 trillion of assets in financial advisors who are not allowed to buy digital assets. And if their clients say, I want 10 basis points, that's 30 billion. If they say, I want 100 basis points, 1%, which is not even a lot, mm -hmm. you know, that's 300 billion. Bitcoin trades about 100 billion on average, about 600 billion is mostly hodled. So, if 300 billion comes in on 100 billion of free float, that's a big move. From there, you've already seen a lot of things catch a bid. Uh, Solana's on a tear here. Uh, Ethereum has been been rallying. You know, still lagging Bitcoin, but it's been rallying. And ultimately, the having cycle is destiny, mm. right? When the having cycle occurs, and the having occurs next next April. The block rewards get cut in half for Bitcoin, and the price of Bitcoin basically has to double. Right. So well, why does it have to double? Well, if it didn't, then the miners would all go out of business, and we can't have the miners all go out of business. So it's kind of a built-in mechanism for increasing the price. 
Well, why does that matter? Well, an increasing price attracts activity, attracts notice. And so the more money that gets converted from fiat into Bitcoin, then some of it trickles down to the other parts of the ecosystem. And that's, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. So a fair value of BTC today, somewhere in the low 50s, according to the, you know, Tim Peterson model, um, based on uh, Metcalf's law, which I think is, is the best model out there. Uh, let's round it to 50 to be conservative. That doubles to 100 in April, May next year. We shoot right through fair value in these, you know, crypto uh, falls that, you know, we're in crypto summer now till next June. Then we go to crypto fall from June to June following the halving. Then we go to another crypto winter, but that's a long time from now. But uh, in crypto fall, on average, we've rallied about two and a half times fair value. I don't think that happens this time. I think partly the law of large numbers, partly not as much leverage in the system. So, yeah. you know, do we get one and a half, one and three quarters, you know, 150, 175, maybe we could get to 200K. I'm going to take the 150 number. Seems like a, uh, a logical place for us to be sometime in 2024. According to Mark Yosko, in the end, the halving cycle is predetermined. And when it happens at the following April, the block rewards for Bitcoin are halved, as is the price of Bitcoin essentially needs to double. So why does it need to double? The miners would all go out of business. If it didn't, there's a built-in mechanism to ensure that the miners don't all go out of business anyway. What difference does that make? Increasing a price, then, draws attention and activity. The more money that has changed from fiat to Bitcoin, with a portion of it eventually trickling down to the other components of the ecosystem, as well as you, a rising tide raises all vessels. Thus, a reasonable price for Bitcoin right now would be in the mid-50s. Based on the the finest model, Mark Yosko say in my opinion is Tim Peterson's model, which is based on the Metcap law. Well, let's round it to 50 to be safe. That doubles to 100 in next year in April and May. We aim for fair value. Let's back to Mark Yosko interview. Do they do they push it one more time? and go right down to the wire. I think the Ides of March, mm. I think March 15th is the drop dead date. Mm. They either have to deny them or they are deemed effective. And I said, I think there's zero chance when you should say never, zero, but I think there's zero chance that BlackRock doesn't get approved. And so does it happen on the January 15th date or do they wait till the March 15th date? I don't I don't really know. I don't have any insight. But in both cases, it's before the halving. And you put that event in front of the halving. Ooh, fireworks, baby. I mean, look, we went from 10 to 60 in a matter of months when GBTC was buying in the last cycle and Sailor came on and and, um, you know, Elon was talking about maybe you could buy a Tesla with it. And then he changed his mind and we went from 60 down to 30. And then Sailor bought more and then we went back to 69. But that first pump from 10 to 60, to 60 when fair value was only 30, mm. I mean, that was almost instantaneous. I mean, it was, and it was that same old, same old. Everybody went home for Thanksgiving. They talked about it. People bought some, people bought some more. Sailor came on TV, GBTC started pumping. I think five or six billion dollars went in at a time when that market cap was much lower and the rest is history. So is this one gonna be bigger than that? Yeah, but we're starting with a bigger number. So the law of large numbers is hard, right? It's tougher to double a $700 billion asset than right. it is a $150 billion asset, it just is. According to Mark Yusko, the criticism leveled at them at, in Mark Yusko opinion, is the same, you know, quote, that the markets are subject to manipulation. No, the true issue is the large banks adore that the futures ETF enables them to travel skimpy shorts. Yes, exactly. And for that reason, we had this amazing bear market. If you travel back to nearly the same day when the futures ETF was introduced, when the market was at its peak in 21, anyone can go astray and manipulate the market. 
This has always been the case with gold. At any time, Mark say, I shall contend that the commodities markets are paper assets that you can influence with a futures contract are more distorted than the market for Bitcoin. If you learned something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance, and we will meet in next video. Thanks.